state of business on our television with me, Thirantha Gunawardana. Let's take a look at today's top stories first. Growth in South Asia is projected to slow in 2019, but Sri Lanka's economy is expected to recover in the medium term. Sri Lanka Pojana Peramuna presidential candidate Gota B. Rajapaksa says the UN resolution of 2015 will not be recognized under their new government. In your top story today, the World Bank in its twice-a-year regional economic update states, in line with a global downward trend, growth in South Asia is projected to slow to 5.9% in 2019, down 1.1 percentage points from April 2019 estimates, leaving uncertainty about a rebound in the short term. The latest edition of the South Asia Economic Focus, Making Decentralization Work, finds that strong domestic demand has weakened, driving a slowdown across the region. It notes imports have declined severely across South Asia, contracting between 15 and 20 percent in Pakistan and Sri Lanka. Furthermore, in Sri Lanka, growth is expected to soften to 2.7 percent in 2019. However, supported by recovering investment and exports, as the security challenges and political uncertainty of last year disappeared, it is projected to reach 3.3% in 2020 and 3.7% in 2021. At the moment, the economy in South Asia is sharply slowing down. That's in line with the global downturn, but the slowdown in South Asia is sharper. This slowdown reinforces problems that already existed. For example, in Pakistan, it comes on top of the macroeconomic crisis that they already had. In India, it comes on top of the problems in the financial markets. In Sri Lanka, it comes on top of weak tourism as a result of the Eastern bombings. Growth potential in South Asia is still strong, but the timing of the rebound back to that high growth potential is very uncertain at the moment. South Asian economies are all decentralizing further at the moment as they are becoming more complex. To make decentralization work, we need more empowerment of the local governments and we need a strong central government that can ensure a level playing field. The Sri Lanka Pojana Peramuna presidential candidate Gota B. Rajapaksa hosted his first media conference in Colombo this morning. More information on this story and much more will be brought to you by the next press segment. The Sri Lanka Pojana Peramuna presidential candidate, former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa said his government to be formed after the presidential election will not recognise the UN resolution on Sri Lanka which was passed by the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva in 2015. The SLPP candidate also said that all LTT cadres who surrendered to the army during the final stages of the war were rehabilitated and released into society. Gotabe Rajapaksa hosted his first media conference in Colombo this morning after being nominated as the SLPP presidential candidate. The media briefing was attended and addressed by former President Mahinda Rajapaksa, SLPP Chairman Prof. G. L. Pires and all the party leaders affiliated to the SLPP at the presidential race. We will always work with the United Nations, but I can't recognize what they have signed with a different government. It's not with my government. I don't think, in my personal view, it, that is not a legal document, but always we will work with the United Nations the Human Rights Organization as well to solve any issues they have. That's my... So don't you recognize it as an uh, agreement uh, made as a state? No, we have already rejected that. As a party, we have rejected that agreement. And in public, we have rejected that. And so that it is not a document where we have signed. And you all know that on this issue, our policies and uh, the present government policies are far apart. Addressing a recent public forum titled Meet the Candidate, organized by the American Chamber of Commerce in Sri Lanka, presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Minister Sajid Premadasa, explained how he will manage the debt of Sri Lanka. One aspect of dealing with debt would be short-term stimulation of the economy to enhance and encourage the national production processes so that the wealth created by the national production processes, the enhanced processes, a portion can be allocated to paying off debt. A second approach 
would be to approach the various international financial and monetary institutions and uh, bargain with them, negotiate with them for a, a restructuring of debt, a restructuring process that would be of benefit for the short-term accelerated growth trajectory uh, of our country. And the third thing would be ensure that uh, whatever expenditures that you embark upon in terms of public investment programs um, are done in a meticulous manner uh, where there is value addition and there is a positive rate of return for the country and the economy. I think those would be uh, three initial steps that I would take, but there are more steps that we are contemplating. The National People's Power launched its education policy for the country's future and its presidential candidate Anra Kumara Disanayaka said yesterday that revolutionary changes were needed to the national education policy in a bid to address the present crisis. Education is sold outside of school at various prices. Children go to school only as a tradition and they receive education elsewhere. Our aim is to bring in education to schools. In the process of national development, education is of paramount importance as an economic strategy. There is a relationship between education, social crimes and living standards. A recent study revealed that 70% of drug addicts and 60% of those remanded were O-level dropouts. Economic and social crisis can be resolved only by improving human resources and commercial assets. Development of the human resource is the first step for the development of the economy. We will introduce a system where the total cost of the education is borne by the state. For this, we have introduced novel concepts in our election manifesto. And it's time for a short commercial break. Do stay tuned for more news after this. Welcome back. The 40th National Conference of the Chartered Accountants organized by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka kicked off yesterday in Batramulla under the patronage of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales President Fiona Wilkinson. The event was also attended by many other internationally renounced finance specialists, corporate and business leaders, policymakers and entrepreneurs. The three-day event was inaugurated under the patronage of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales President Fiona Wilkinson and the conference's theme is titled as Finding Your Mojo, A Journey of Self-Discovery. The conference is considered the country's biggest business summit that intended to attract over 2,000 delegates, including business leaders and C-suite executives. The conference that will conclude on the 16th of this month will feature several renowned speakers, including corporate leaders, entrepreneurs, mountaineers and legendary cricketer to help delegates regain their passion and purpose with the aim of driving forward their companies and country to success. Meanwhile, CA Sri Lanka also launched a special commemorative first day stamp cover to mark the Diamond Jubilee of CA Sri Lanka and the 40th anniversary of the National Conference. The members of both our institutes strengthen the global economy by strengthening national economies and national accountancy professions. And both of our organisations are members of chartered accountants worldwide. So we work together with other leading institutes from around the world to support, develop and promote the vital role that chartered accountants play. Events such as this help to highlight that vital role and to bring collaboration with others. Tonight's inauguration, as you know, marks the start of what has become Sri Lanka's largest annual business summit, something to be incredibly proud of, I think. In more developments, a memorandum of understanding was signed for the first cable car project in Sri Lanka to be built in Nuwarelia last Sunday. The 50 million US dollar project in Nuwarelia is intended to promote the tourism sector. 
The relevant agreement was signed under the patronage of the Minister of Plantation Industries, Navin Disanayake, at the Nura Elia Municipal Council premises last Sunday. The 50 million US dollar cable car project in Nura Elia received cabinet approval in July 2019. It is expected to further enhance the tourist attraction through the cable car project and earn a higher income. Nura Elia has been chosen to commence a cable car project concerning its high elevation and natural beauty. Subsequently, Outdoor Engineering Lanka Private Limited and its foreign partner Dublin Cable Company have put forward a project proposal to commence a cable car project from Nanu Oya to Single Tree Mountain and Gregory Lake. It is expected to operate 86 cars which can carry 10 passengers each and in the first stage 43 cars are expected to be built. Toyota Lanka Limited launched the newest versions of its signature Toyota Corolla RAV4 SUV and the highest van in Sri Lanka last week. The launch was held at the Toyota Plaza in Vatala under the patronage of Toyota Lanka Managing Director Shungo Yoshioka and the Director and Chief Operating Officer Manohar Atukorala. The all-new RAV4 SUV, which comes with a 2-litre petrol and 2.5-litre hybrid engine, has been dubbed one of the most versatile crossover SUVs in the world. Power packed with an electric sunroof, energy-efficient lighting systems, six-speaker radio and multimedia sound system, 18 alloys, multi-information displays, power shutters and power doors in new RAV4 are being engineered for versatility. On the other hand, the latest version of the Toyota Corolla 1600 cubic centimeters engine is also fully equipped with sound systems, 16 alloy wheels, LED headlamps, fog lamps and cruise control for safe and secure driving. Meanwhile, the 2019 version of high van has a 2,800 cubic centimeters diesel engine typically built for endurance. The 15 or 16 seater interior is designed for optimum comfort levels with superior leg space and luggage space as well. We are launching three of our prime products, namely Corolla and with elegant design with improved features. RAV4, it is athletic, stylish and sporty look. And high S is always safety, added safety and comfortable and very spacious cabin space. So you can see those three magnificent vehicles in Sri Lankan roads. The Big Bad Wolf book sale will return to Sri Lanka for the third consecutive year from the 18th to the 27th of this month at the Sri Lanka Exhibition and Convention Centre. The inaugural sale of Big Bad Wolf in Sri Lanka was held in October 2017 and this year's sale will feature from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. from next Monday to Thursday, followed by a 24-hour operation from Friday to Sunday, allowing the readers to take the entire weekend to leisurely browse through thousands of titles. Readers can expect to find over 1.5 million new English books, ranging from fiction, bestsellers, literature, non-fiction, business books, cooking books, art and design, coffee table books and more. Reading enthusiasts will rest assured with a bargain with discounts of 50% to 90% off recommended retail price. Stocks ended in the red today. More on that after this short commercial break. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The All Share Price Index dropped 29.61 points to close at 5,840.48 and the S&P SL20 dropped 22.26 points to close at 2,878 points. Turnover was 583 million rupees and over 37 million shares were traded. Now let's take a look at today's Forex trades. With that, we will come to the end of today's bulletin. Tune in tomorrow at the same time for more of the very latest on State of Business. Until then, take care. Goodbye.